All right, welcome everybody. Today we are going to talk about the most powerful habit I believe you can have and an app that you can use to maintain that. My name is Nick Redmark. I'm a coach engineer and I'm obsessed with personal development as the people who have been following me know. I keep thinking about this topic. I keep thinking about how does personal development work? What is the core? I keep looking at my own development and trying to formulate it. What are the principles of personal development and how can I express them in a way that is understandable to other people? And I think that one of the important thing is this distinction between the planning self and the acting self. So think about it. Personal development is about you becoming conscious of your life, looking at it from a bird's eye perspective and thinking this could be improved in one way or another. And this doesn't happen all the time. In a sense, it's a rare thing. So if you look at your life and this is when the planning self gets active and this is when the acting self gets active, you will mostly be in acting self mode. And then sometimes you will look at your life and then and then go back to acting mode. So it's, it's rare that you are in a day or in your life conscious enough, enthusiastic enough to look at your life in general and then think, okay, this is the way my life could be improved. And so the question is, how do you harness these moments in an optimal way? Because there are so many ways this can go wrong. So your planning self can become way too idealistic and have goals and ideals about your life that uh, cannot be introduced in practice. Then you go back to your acting self and your acting self says, screw that person. For example, something that happened to me a few times was, okay, from tomorrow morning, I'm going to wake up at five and go jogging every morning. And then the first day, the second day, I managed to do it. The third day I said, what am I doing here? And, uh, and I stopped doing it. So one, one problem really is this discrepancy between your ideal and reality. So it's really a game of patience, but it's hard to have this patience if you only get to have an impact once in a while. So you really want to have as much impact as possible once you are enthusiastic. Maybe you have read a book, you have watched a video that really motivated you and you really want to change your life, but you cannot change it so much because tomorrow you will be back in your acting self. So how do we solve this problem? Last year, my answer to that would have been to have a strong commitment ritual because this is what happens, right? You have this one moment of clarity. What do you do? What you can do is to write down your commitment, strongly commit to it, and then set stakes and so on. I've talked about it in other videos. And if you decide to follow that principle, one thing is important that you do one thing at a time because you don't have the mental energy to do more than one of these strong commitments at a time. And if you think about your year divided in 12, it takes about two months to generate a new habit. So imagine that in a year, you have about six opportunities to build one of these new habits. So each of these can be one strong commitment. And this would have been my answer last year to how do you harness these moments of consciousness and enthusiasm about your life. Now, meanwhile, I read the book Atomic Habits by James Clear, where I discovered a principle that kind of changes the game a bit. And it's the idea that different habits have synergies. If you do two things at a time, always, then they become linked in your mind and your behavior. They, there is a synergy between the two things. So this idea of having to focus on one thing at a time has a certain weakness, which is it doesn't harness this, this capacity that we have to build things upon other things. And so my thinking has evolved a bit on that. Let's look at this from another perspective. The things that you do in your life can be divided in kind of two aspects. One area of your life are the things that you do to learn. And what characterizes this area is that you have to try things around and you don't know with what will work. You have to taste many things. And at the beginning of your life, when you're young, most of your life will be this because you don't know what uh, you don't know yourself. You don't know what works in life. And so most of your life will be variable and, and maybe chaotic. But then over time, you will be able to learn what works and proceduralize it. And so the more you grow, the more the proceduralized part of your life will grow. Obviously, sometimes you will have to break down a proceduralized part and, and make it fluid again so that you can maybe find new solutions to different life circumstances. But the thing is this, no matter where you are in your life, there are things in your life that are stable, that are fixed, that, are, that happen day in, day out. And so if this is kind of your day, 
uh, that you will obviously need to sleep from a certain time to a certain time. So this is fixed. And then you will need to eat a few times a day. And perhaps if you really care about your health, you will have to work out, let's say, in, in the afternoon and so on. And so there are really slots of your life, of your day, that are kind of always the same. And this is a huge opportunity. So for example, in my life, the morning slot immediately after I wake up, the evening slot immediately before I go to sleep, and the slot that happens immediately after my morning slot, which is when I start my, my work, are my opportunities to shape my life in a more stable way. And now we can move to the one habit, the one habit that I believe is the basis for change in your life. And now it comes, the habit is tracking your routines. Because if you do this, then you will be able to slowly incrementally shape your life in a way that is sustainable. Step number one is to actually write down your routine. And here, I don't mean your ideal routine. I mean your actual routine. What is it that you do? Keep in mind, really, this is the, this is the key. Keep in mind that your planning self needs to be in sync with your acting self. And so don't think about your ideal life, think about your actual life and write down your routine, perhaps your morning routine. What is it that you do? And then the next step is to follow it consciously. Until now you have been following your morning routine just on autopilot. This is the habit, this is the key. Start doing the same thing, but while reading your routine that you wrote down, okay? From this point, you will be able to start shaping and transforming your life. And then once this habit is established of you doing the same things you have been doing until now, but following the steps that you wrote down, then you can start actually improving the routine. And as you do so, the important thing is that you keep being accurate, that you don't diverge from reality. And I believe this habit is the basis for everything else. If you want to introduce new habits uh, in your day, then you can just tweak your daily routine, but be careful to keep it accurate, to keep it as close to reality as possible. I've really had a hard time finding an app that actually helps you to do that because most productivity apps are to-do lists that you do once and then you forget them and that's not the idea. Uh, or they, are, they help you kind of, they help you plan your day time-wise. But who knows, maybe certain activities will take longer or less long. So I was really unhappy with all the apps that I tried out until I found this one. It's called Tiny Gain and it does what it says. It really helps you write down your routines, then you just play your routine and you follow it. And I've been really happy since I tried it out. So I recommend you try it. And that's it for today. Let me know if it helped you. See you again tomorrow. Bye.